I uh, actually found a portable table that I had, so that really is going to be beneficial. But I'm going to start with our center boards for the table. So remember what we did here is we laid them out five, six, seven, eight. One through four is going to be over here. Nine through twelve is going to be over here. But I'm doing these first because these, this is where the butterflies are going to go. So I want to get this center section built first so I can actually cut the butterflies out while it's still just this section. And I'm not messing with an entire big tabletop uh, with my router and cutting out the butterflies. So I'm, I'm kind of doing this in a modular fashion. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dry fit first. So I'm going to take the, uh, remember we already put the, uh, the biscuit slots in there. So I'm going to put the biscuits in there, make sure everything fits up, and then we will glue this section up, and then we'll do the other sections. And also remember that what we did down here was, right, this is where we're going to be uh, cutting off the material for the overall length of the table. Okay? So let's go ahead and get this thing dry fit. Okay, folks, here we go. So uh, I dry fit everything. So let's go ahead and put this together. One last check, five, six, seven, eight. The boards are in proper order. We've got our brush here, and we're gonna start doing this. So we are all glued up for the first section and we'll let this dry and then we'll uh, glue up the other two sections and while those are drying we'll put the butterflies in the center of this one and uh, then we'll be ready to put the three separate pieces together, sections together for the entire tabletop. Uh, I like doing it this way just because it's easier to work with until you get to the very end. All right, well, this is the second day, so I'm gluing up the second section of the table, and um, <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed, but this time I remembered to use the saran wrap. <laughs> uh, the, the first uh, glue up I didn't, but really I just used the, the old uh, Glad cling wrap there, <clears throat> and I put it under each one of these cross joints, um, and I put it under each one of the, the supports here, and that just makes the glue not stick to the wood, the support pieces. So when you take it off, you don't have those nasty uh, pieces of little wood sections that are glued to your tabletop that you have to sand down. So anyway, this is section two. Tomorrow we'll do section three. And then we'll be ready to uh, work on the center section, uh, which will contain the butterflies. And then we have to run a groove down the center section of the table to support the two inch wide beam that goes the whole width uh, underneath the table. So that's what we'll be working on next along with the legs. Okay, what I wanted to show you was, uh, I don't know if I showed you this before or not, but before I even started the table, remember one of the things we were talking about was how to plan for putting for handling things like the tabletop when you finally get it to a point that you're going to be putting it all together so i built this kind of matrix here with two by fours my saw horses and it's not totally level i'm not really worried that it is right now but what we want to do here today is we want to get these three pieces of the tabletop 
dried together with the biscuits and that's because I, we need to make the final cut for the length of the tabletop. So you notice here where we marked off some of the areas. So in, in other words, on this end, this is the furthest in we're going to go on all three boards on this side. So it's like this point and this point are about the same. And then you have a little more here, but, but we'll be cutting up, up on this. On this other end of the table, what you'll notice is uh, I really haven't marked this off yet. A little bit here on this one. But in other words, on this end, everything is good. We, we're just going to need to trim it down. And then on this, this end, the same thing. So remember when we put the table together, to put the boards together, we made sure that we had the boards with the worst issues on them on one end. So when we trimmed it down, we only had to trim on one end. So if we measure this out, we'll still be in our within our 90 inch length on the table. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to get some biscuits. I'm going to put them in the slots. I am not gluing this tabletop up. Then I'm going to use my pipe clamps over here. I'm going to lightly clamp it together. Then I'm going to measure it off. Then I'm going to use a straight edge, most likely one of these uh, uh, track edges here. And then I'll run my uh, handsaw down the end and cut the table to size, right? Then when we're done with that, this center piece, remember, we still have to do something to this. And what do we have to do? We have to cut the inlays, the insets out, so we can put our butterfly inlays all along the table. So they're going to go center line, five of them all along the table, and they're going to be inset. So this is going to be the most uh, uh, tricky part to me because if I screw up these insets, uh, or yeah, for these uh, inlays, then uh, then I'm pretty much shafted on this uh, on this center section. The only other thing I can do is turn this over and try it again on the other side. Hi everyone, I wanted to talk to you today about the butterfly insets uh, that I'm going to, or inlays, that I'm going to put down the center of the table. Now there will be five of these, and they are uh, a lot harder to make than I thought they would be. Um, I've done some practicing on some pine already, and uh, now I'm using some walnut that I purchased, and I'm still messing it up. So let me kind of tell you uh, how I've... Um, uh, the journey I've been on and how I got to the to the best one so far. So as you can see on this one here, uh, there's some. Uh, this is not a good inset. Let me just put it to you that way, right? So th this is the, this is actually the inlay part, and what I'm going to do to the top of the table is do this part, which is the inset, the outer part here, and then I'll in insert this inlay into the inset. So. We don't need to go into that. All I want to tell you is this is a lot harder than it, than it seems, than it looks like. Now the second one seems to be pretty good. I've got some decent corners here. And these center butterfly pieces are the toughest part of this whole thing. Let me turn the camera this way and kind of go over it. As I'm bringing the router up here, uh, for some reason I'm jumping and you can see what's happening there, right? So then we get to the third one, which was no better uh, on, the, on the center part. Fourth one looks okay. This fifth one looks pretty good. So this is the butterfly insert, the template here. So I got this, I think, at uh, uh, Amazon, actually. So it's, it's a little pricey, but the thing I like about it is it's got all these different templates, these inserts, and then on the back, it's got really good... Uh, instructions so very good to, to buy and then what you do is you get this double-sided tape and you tape it down on there and then I actually had a clamp there as well so let me bring this up and I'll show you so this was number five and it's actually not a bad inset you can see a little bit here that I jumped a little bit and then this is the very last one I did number six and this is this one came out really good sorry I'm sweating um, and the reason it came out good is because what I'm doing now is way back here on this first one, I was putting the router in and then I'm just 
cutting it all the way around. I'm using a DeWalt uh, plunge router. So the DW618, it's a plunge router, and I got this uh, up cut bit and, and the whole inlay kit from um, Wood, Woodcraft. So if you just go there, you can get this whole insert with the bit and everything. And then what it has on it is it has this little collet that I'll put this on here, right, when I go to do the inset. So let's get back to what I'm doing here. So what I did here is I took my time. Gee, isn't it funny how taking your time always seems to solve a lot of our problems. I'm plunging the bit, cutting to a corner, bring, coming up, running the router back over it, and the, the suction of the router is cleaning up all this, or a lot of the sawdust. Then I'm coming back to about here, coming down and meeting in the corner. Then I'm raising up, letting it clean out, and here's the thing, you'll read to where the router should be running in a counterclockwise, uh, uh, you know, fashion. So it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, clockwise seems to work better for me, not counterclockwise. But, uh, so just a little bit of, uh, of input there. Let me set another one of these up and I'll run it with the camera and you'll see what I'm talking about. I want to make sure that you're not going to hit this clamp and then it's going to force you out, so always check that. Now what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to plunge, come to the corner, lift up, and then go back, and then I'll come up here, plunge, come down to the corner, and I'll just keep doing that. Take my time. I've got this set at 24,000 RPM, which is the recommended setting. Anytime I feel resistance, I stop. That looks like another pretty good one. We look at it here, like we did a pretty good job. Got some nice corners, corners, center part looks pretty good. So that's my, my point is I took my time. Uh, I let the router clean out the groove. Even though this is an upcut bit, it still doesn't pull everything up out of it. Let the router do some work for you. The last thing I wanted to show you was on this template, I actually drew a little guideline here because I want the, the grain here to be uh, straight, right? If you, if you get this template kind of askew, then your grain's gonna look strange when you, when you put your insert in your table. Because this insert will actually be going perpendicular to the tabletop, right? So this grain will be going perpendicular to the grain of the tabletop. This was the single piece of wood that we took our uh, inlays out. Uh, and we routed them out on both sides of it. And what I wanted to show you was that I was going to cut this down the middle and to get the inlays out of it. So, but I already did that. So what happened was, as I cut it, I got my individual little inlays out here. So uh, I think I've got some pretty good ones here. And remember, all we need are five for the table. So uh, this other side, uh, I didn't cut it. Uh, quite as uh, deep because I wanted to be careful. So I'll go ahead and run this through the uh, bandsaw again and just take a little bit more off so I can get these uh, out of it because I think this side was actually the good side or had some more good ones in it as you can as you can see here. So I'm gonna run this through the bandsaw again then we'll have all of them out then we can start kind of cleaning these up and um, then we'll go from there.
Well, we finished the uh, cutting the uh, inserts with the in inlays for the tabletop. So here's what we have. We've got one, two, three, four. They're spaced every 18 inches because this is a 90 inch table. And so next what I need to do is turn this piece over and we need to cut a groove down the center of it so the center uh, support piece can fit in that groove. All right, well, we, uh, as you recall, we uh, routed out our, our inserts here and we've got our bow ties that are gonna go in there. And now what I'm gonna do is, I've already done two of them, but I'm gonna try to uh, put some corners on these. I don't know if you can see that, but they're, they're rounded. So when you use that template, it actually gives you rounded corners on these things right here. So you really need to come back in with a chisel and chisel these corners so that the square corners that you routed from the template will fit uh, down in there. Now, as we do this, you want to be really careful. Um, I'm starting, I start with a three quarter inch chisel. So I'm using the edge here as a guide and I'm kind of bringing the chisel up and along it and then see how the See how that point right there is just right there? See that right there? That's all you want because when I first started doing this, I'd come way out here and then I'm cutting way out beyond the bottom of this thing. So you can see I take the chisel, put it up against the edge, bring it over, and then I just kind of lift it up a little bit, bring that point so it's right about there, and then I'll chisel it down. Then I'll come to this side and square it off. It's really not square, I know. So I understand that, but then I'll square off a point. I'll, I'll get a point here that then this piece is going to fit into. All right. So we'll do the rest of these and we'll see how it turns out. Okay. So we finished this one up and what I'm doing here is I'm numbering them. So I know which one goes where, and then I'm also numbering the bottom side of the butterfly or the bow tie that's going to go in. So when I put that in there, it's going to be a little snug. And it's a decent fit. So if, if you guys think you're going to get these, you know, uh, manufacturing furniture perfect, you're not. Um, I don't know why this is off uh, as opposed to the inset here. Uh, because I'm using the same template. So it's just, it's just really strange. Um, but it's, it's better than doing it freehand. So I think it'll work out in the end once we get it all sanded. Um, I'm going to stain these a much darker color than the tabletop, so they'll stand out. And I think it'll look fine once we get it all stained up and sealed up and everything. So that's how we're doing it right now. I have done three. I'm going to do the last one, and then we'll be uh, ready to, to insert them. So something I was thinking about was once I get these inserts in there, for example, this is insert number one, and by the way, because I sanded both sides, I couldn't keep the one on the side, so I put a one on the bottom and then arrows facing up, which indicate that this is the first one and this is the top. And I put it right here because I put a little arrow here. We're gonna line up the bottom. So it's little things like that that I gotta think about. The other thing I thought about was once I get this in here and I really sand this thing down and it's even with the table, what I don't want to do is do what I'm doing right now, and that is just take a chisel and kind of, you know, try to get under there and lift it up because I'm afraid I'll start chipping out some of this. So what I decided to do was just drill a hole through the tabletop, and then when I get this sanded and it's ready to glue in, because then is when I have to stain it, right? You don't want to glue this in and then go back and stain it. You're going to get dark stain all over out here. Put it in. I'll sand them down. I'll pop it out through the bottom because stain it, it'll already be at the right height. I'll put it back in there. And then I'll put the final, or the, the coats of uh, sealer uh, on the table and then start sanding and everything should start blending together. But anyway, it's just little stuff like that that kind of gets me thinking. So I thought I'd share with you. One other thing that uh, I'm looking at here is the fact that how uh, just how these butterflies are going to look on the wood 
So I, I had some different stains here, and I thought uh, what I did is I took a piece. Now this is not super sanded, so it's kind of rough. But I used the finish that I'm going to use on the table, and it's just a clear finish. So I'm not doing any colored stain. I want the I want the beauty of the wood to really come out and shine there. But I had four different uh, bow ties here, and I stained them up. I want to see which one looks the best against the wood. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with this light because it's not very good light here. But uh, I think I want to go with, with more of a, of a contrast, and I actually think it's going to be, might be this one or this one after I stain it up some more. And this is a uh, warm cherry. So I think a little redness against the natural color of this walnut is going to really make those bow ties pop, and that's what I'm that's what I'm going after. These are just old bow ties I had, so these are not the production bow ties. Uh, I just want to check some colors first. Okay, I've got protection on the table underneath. I've taken the biscuits out as you can see they're laying in the center section because I'm going to be bringing both this section and this section in. Now we're going to start gluing up. So what I'll do here is I'll, uh, I'll probably just speed things up so you can see how it glues up and clamps together. Here we go. Got it glued up. We've got it clamped up. I think we're looking pretty good. I think we've got things tight enough. Just tightening up a little bit more here. But we're going to let this uh, sit overnight and we'll see how we look in the morning. Um, I did have a wet cloth on hand here. So as the glue starts to seep up, I can get to it. I used this plastic, didn't really need all of it. Uh, in fact, I, I missed it here, so I'll just have to live with that. Um, but really, I tried to put the plastic down so if glue seeped up, it didn't stick to the boards and I have to deal with all that when I take them off, but we should be good. Well, here it is, <clears throat> ready to be sanded. So it's very rough right now. And what I'm gonna do, you know, there's, there's some things to consider. Uh, remember I put the holes here for the uh, bow ties to pop them out, but I don't want to glue those in just yet. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put them in, then I'll sand it down with them in there. Uh, and then at the very end, I'll stain them the darker color and then glue them in so uh, just gotta think about <laughs> what needs to happen when but look at the grain of this tabletop isn't that just beautiful so I'm gonna start with 60 grit sandpaper because this is really rough and then I'll work down to uh, somewhere around uh, a thousand grit sandpaper and then we'll go from there Okay, now I'm going to just uh, take a tack cloth uh, to it. We've uh, gotten to 800 or 600 grit sandpaper. A little coat of mineral spirits on there. I'm going to bring this in a little closer and I want you to watch this grain when I apply the mineral spirits. Now again, I'm doing this for a couple reasons. Reason number one 
just to bring out any imperfections in the wood before we really seal it. And I, I think I see a few already. Uh, number two is to kind of bring the fibers of the wood or the hair of the wood up a little bit for a final sanding. But I want you to look at this grain. My God, this is just beautiful wood. I mean, if you remember what this looked like when I got it from the, from the lumber yard, from the mill, it was totally rough. Totally rough. And now look at this. It is gorgeous. Just wanted to kind of show you what this is going to look like. A uh, little reflection on the light, but look at that. Look at that grain in this thing. Those butterflies are gonna look great. So, we got the legs, we got the tabletop. Now what we're gonna do is seal the tabletop, put some sealer on the legs, flip the tabletop over, attach the legs, and then the cross brace, and then we'll, should be done. We're getting there.